Hi everybody and welcome to my 10th video on the Nikon D40. This video looks at the setup menu. I'm going to go into menu, back out to the setup list and the, or the menu list. And then we go down to the wrench which is the setup menu and these are the various options. The first one is CMS and setup menu. The options are simple, full, and my menu. Simple displays only basic options and features in the custom settings and setup menus. Other menus other than those to have all the options. If you're just learning how to use a DSLR, this is the best setting. Full displays all the options in all the menus. This is best to have the full control over your camera. And this is also best for screwing up a setting on accident. My menu allows you to select the options you want displayed. This is a great way to stop the retouch menu from being displayed. We'll get to that in, later, in a later video. I will give you a, a spoiler. The retouch menu is awful. Next one is format memory card. Yes or no? I'm not even going into this menu. Yes, format your memory card. No, doesn't format your memory card and backs out. Info display format. This allows different display settings in different modes. So this is actually a pretty useful little thing. This allows you to set up your Vario program modes to have classic graphic or wallpaper settings. Classic looks like this. This is classic. This is graphic right here. And this is wallpaper mode. I tend to keep them in classic because it's the easiest to recognize. There is one thing that this is extremely useful for. If you set your very Vario program modes to one of the settings and your PSAM modes to another, you can just look at the back of the camera and know which group of settings you're set to. In general, classic uh, is more straightforward. It's linear, it's organized, it's squared off, it's e easy to recognize everything and where it is. Gra uh, graphic represents everything graphically and it's it's more of an abstract way of organizing things, but you also have to hunt for some of the information that you need. Classic is definitely easier to interpret. Wallpaper uses one of your photos as the background, otherwise it's the same as graphic. So here's how we read a graphic type layout. So we have the mode up here, M for manual, and if I change it on the dial, I get different settings. Now, because I have an NAI lens, it does not recognize lenses. It, do, it does not recognize that I have a lens attached because there's no data connection, which is why NAI lenses only work in manual. The 100 is where the shutter speed is. The F dash dash, if I had an electronic lens, it would tell me what the aperture is right there. The box with the bracket in it, that's my autofocus mode. And that tells me that my camera is going to focus on the center point. The VI right there, the VI says that I'm in vivid mode. The indicator under it says that I have beep turned off. I have a full battery. I have four and a half thousand images remaining on the memory card at least. No exposure compensation, no flash power compensation. Image quality is set to fine. Uh, is set to fine. Large JPEG. White balance is auto. ISO is 200. Shooting mode is continuous. Below that we have we have uh, autofocus setting, autofocus mode, and uh, metering mode. On oops, on the right side, that just disappeared. And they're not illuminated on my camera because again I have an NAI lens on there. 
Auto Shooting Info. This automatically displays shooting data on the monitor when shooting in various modes. And so in digital video program mode, it will pro it'll provide data on the screen. Same thing in this mode. You can set it to one or the other. In one mode, it will provide data. In the other, it won't, or both of them being off. And what that will tell you is how a photo was taken, even if you do or don't have control over it. And it's very useful in the partial control and full manual modes in PASM and can help you learn if you're in the digital vario, vario program modes uh, and you have been using those. World time allows you to select your time zone, wherever, whichever time zone you're in, what the date is, the date format that it's going to display in, whether or not you're in daylight savings time, or you want it to automatically adjust for daylight savings time. Really, the last of those only being useful in the US, and it's unfortunate that it's even useful in the US. Uh, daylight LCD brightness allows you to control your LCD's brightness from negative two up to positive two. I use negative two to preserve battery life. Uh, the LCD is going to drain battery very quickly, and unless you're outside where it's really, really bright, negative two is bright enough for the majority of situations. The next one is video mode, and it's NTSC and PAL, and that's for a video out. It's for your video output, for your Y output. This camera does not record videos. This is for displaying your images on a TV, uh, DVD, uh, game console, or whatever you can plug it into, and it just simply allows the camera to display the images as a slideshow on that, uh, in, in that language, or whatever those things are. Language, this is a big list. Lots and lots of languages in here. You can see by how small the scroll bar is. So you just want to select your language. Um, choose the one you speak or prank your friends by choosing one they don't speak. Oops. Image comment, off, on, or attach. Uh, attach or add comments to your images as you take them. This can be used to identify ones you really want to look at when you have an SD card of 1500 images. However, it's basically useless because it only works with Nikon's imaging software. USB, mass storage or peer-to-peer. Or -peer. Uh, this is how your computer recognizes your camera when it's plugged into it. Does it recognize it as a mass storage device? And you want to use MSC if you want to download images via a USB cable and have things work predictably. Uh, MTP being, I believe it's master to peer or peer to peer. Use this if you have Nikon's picked bridge. And if you don't have that software, basically what you want to do is always leave this in MSC. And when you remove files, put your SD card in the PC. Moving your SD card to your PC is going to be a lot faster than using a USB cable on this camera. There's really no reason to have that option in there. Folders. Use this menu to switch between folders, create new ones, or change your default name. The name defaults in the software to NCD40, Nikon Camera D40. Uh, sorry, the name defaults to yeah NCD40, yeah. You can change it to your name, pics, or something else if you'd like to. So that's my custom one right there. That's the standard one. File numbering sequence, on, off, or reset. Off means that with each new folder, which is every 1,000 images, the number resets to 0001. This is annoying if you have multiple folders on your SD card and want to dump all the files into the same place on your PC. Honestly, strongly advise not using off. On 
file numbering continues from 0001 to 9999. The file numbering does not reset in a new folder. And this means that if you have 2,000 images on here, you can dump all 2,000 of them into the same folder on your computer and not accidentally overwrite everything. The numbering does not reset when you turn the camera off. This is really good unless you take 10,000 photos on one card and dump them all into the same folder on your PC. But if you're doing that, I think you've got other file management issues you need to work out first. Reset resets the file numbers to 000 with the next image. Zero, I think it's 0001 with the next image. It creates a new folder if the one in use already has images in it. So let's say, for instance, that you're going out and you're taking pictures of, of a wedding. So you create a folder that says groom's family. Reset the numbering. So everything in the, you take 150, 200 photos of the groom's family. Great. Create a folder that says bride for the bride's family. Reset the numbering. Now you're back to 0001. So you know that when you get up to 150 photos that you've taken pictures of an equal number of pictures of both sides of the family, there's not going to be an argument afterwards. But it also, this is a way for you to manage your files if you're going out on multiple shoots or uh, a multiple stage shoot in one day. But in general, I recommend leaving this at, oh, I keep hitting menu buttons on the wrong camera. In general, I recommend leaving this as OK, or as on rather. Mirror lockup, on or off. This is not a photographic mirror lockup. This is specifically for shutter curtain and sensor cleaning. If you lock up your mirror to clean your sensor, you need to make sure that you have a full battery. A dead battery will cause the curtain to close. And if you're cleaning it, that's a really good way to ruin your shutter and your sensor. If you have a brush in there when the shutter curtain closes, that brush and the metal ferrule will get dragged across the top of the sensor. Pieces of brush will get jammed into the gears on the shutter. It's a mess. So if you're going to do that, if you're going to open up the shutter to, to clean your sensor, make sure that your battery is full. Firmware version. This display is the firmware version. So the D40 has two firmwares, A and B. I don't know what the two different fir firmwares do. The final versions for this camera are 1.12 for A and 1.11 for B. So if your firmware has a lower number than 12 and 11 respectively, then you need to update your firmware. And uh, there are directions on how to do that on the Nikon website. When I got this camera, it was set at 9 and 8. And you have to update each step, which means downloading multiple files and upgrading. You can't just go from 9 to 12 and 8 to 11 or whatever they are on your camera. The firmware updates are very important. They improve camera functionality and give you some additional options and things like that. It is uh, absolutely worth the time to upgrade your firmware. The next one is dust off reference photo. This option only works if you have the software Capture NX. Uh, the, this, uh, with that software, this option allows the camera to find dust and then display dust data in Capture NX so you can then go and clean the sensor in the right places. Honestly, it's kind of a waste. Um, if you're going to clean the sensor, just clean the whole thing. And then you don't have to worry about where your dust is. Automatic image rotation. On or off. With this on, images automatically rotate to the proper orientation in post-processing. So if you leave this on and then you take a portrait orientation photo and open it up in Photoshop, let's say, for instance, or GIMP or any of the other softwares, then it will automatically display as portrait in your computer. If you have it off, then it will automatically display as landscape. This should always be on. I'm actually unaware of a good reason not to have this on. And that's it. That is the whole setup menu.